Hello guys, this is Universal Giant, welcome back for more of Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. Last time, we used Ho-Oh to gain access to the rest of the Ruins of Alp that we couldn't explore previously, and we caught ourselves the exclamation point and question mark unknowns, which we hadn't seen until then. This time, we're going after the one legendary that we can still catch that I've been putting off for the very end because I love him just as much as you do. And this one, we didn't have access to? until we earned all 16 badges, including the 8 badges here in Kanto, which is why I didn't come down here before. And I also seem to remember that the last time we were down here, I pointed out an item that we wouldn't be able to get until we went down here, and surprisingly enough for me, I remembered to go back and get it. It's a nugget that I'm probably going to sell for money that I don't need. Good for us! But here? A Cerulean Cave. Hi, Magneton. Now, because this place is a maze, it's in the dark, and it's going to take forever to find everything, I'm going to speed it up. Hope you don't mind. It would be way too much time for us to go through absolutely everything there is, and thankfully for everyone involved, I actually have a map open on my left. Oh, the convenience of being able to record on two different computers at the same time so I can see a map of where it is that I'm going. Now, not all of this is going to be completely in the dark. For instance, once we head up here, it's still dark. I sincerely should have thought this through. I, I mean, I went ahead and brought Smash Ball because I knew we were going to be using Rock Smash on some stuff, but I didn't anticipate having to use Flash. So I didn't bring along Sleepy. Maybe that wouldn't have been such a bad idea. Yellow Shard, another rare shard in this game. Smash Bowl, you're alright. But there's also some hidden items up here as well. There's some really important ones that I want to pick up. For instance, PM24 Thunderbolt. Here in Cerulean Cave. And this, you can only imagine, I'm going to be using on Cracko. Electric type moves, special base, 95 power, 100 base accuracy, may cause paralysis. This is 15 base power stronger than Cracko's Discharge, which is why I'm going to be replacing it. Now, maybe more helpful to have Discharge and Double Battles where you can hit two things at once, but I'm not throwing in those, come on. So that's one of the most important things out of the way right off the bat. But there's plenty more to this place, and as you can see, although the rooms in here are not very big, that whole floor up there is nothing but one gigantic maze, which means it's probably going to take all the repels I have left to get through here. Why did I not find more repels? That was not the smartest thing I ever did. But yes, this is one of the few places I would very highly recommend you bring along a map or something, because there's no way you're going to get through it without one. Where the heck do I land? Up here? Yeah, there's stairs. So difficult to see anything in here. But this whole place is just one gigantic maze, and I'm going to be bitching about it for 15 minutes. Hope you don't mind. What? You do? You already skipped ahead to the YouTube encounter. Well, there's not much I can do about that now, is there? I thought there would be a hidden item here. There's no hidden item. I mean, you have that block there. It's if you're hiding something, but you're not hiding anything. It's just too dead end. I thought there was going to be a hidden item up here. I wouldn't have gone out of my way if there wasn't. What, you want me to check these things in advance like a professional? Why the hell would I do that? Hi, Nugget. Free mine. How are you doing? Just listening to this music again, though. I mean, how many times am I going to rave about the nostalgia thousands I can't have just listening to the old school music here? When I was a kid growing up, Pokemon stopped being popular. And I thought it was a sad day. Because it meant that all of the years that I had poured into remembering who things were or getting better at the game and loving what I did, all of a sudden meant absolutely nothing. And it was strangely shocking that that's what I did. Because I never thought I'd ever use it again. Well, that's not what I did. I Shot into the back of my mind is knowledge that I never thought I'd ever use again. I think the left is a dead end. Okay, I know where I am on the map. But, now that we're getting back to it, and now that I get to experience all of these things I enjoyed so much when I was a kid, it's bringing back so many fond memories. And throughout this entire project, however long it's actually been going on, I've been feeling those same good memories rushing back, and I think that's one of the things that's made this LP particularly enjoyable for me, and why I've gone out of my way to show off all of these little things, however minute and insignificant they may be. Because I just love Pokemon so much, and wish that I'd... I guess secretly wish that I'd never shunned it away. Speaking of which, when is that I'm not I'm trying to get the item here? I hate when you try to walk onto... Wasn't that an item? I guess it's back here. Hyper When is the age when... Put up a repel. When something that used to be too kiddie or embarrassing suddenly becomes cool again because all of the kids that are now grown up realize that Hey, kiddie stuff ain't that bad. Once you get past the kiddie stuff. I mean, Pokemon's a perfect example of it. If you take it seriously, there is so much to it. So many levels of complications that no kid would ever be able to figure out in their right mind. So you gotta figure, at least to some extent, that they had you guys in mind when they made it this complicated. I mean, when they added so many things like EVs and IVs and natures and breeding and shaming for finding shinies, no kid's ever gonna figure that stuff out. So I'm not sure if they were, at least on some level, trying to cater to an older crowd. I don't know, maybe it's a Japanese thing, I don't really get. But I'm thankful looking back on it that I went and gave Pokemon a second try. After it suddenly became much less popular and nobody wanted to play it, we were considered a loser if you did. And I guess I never really touched on exactly what it was that brought me back to it. So as soon as I could figure out where the hell I am on the map, that yeah, we're supposed to go back around this thing and above it. I sincerely doubt he still watches my videos if he ever did to begin with, because we had a long conversation about there's no reason for you to watch a video of a friend if you have no interest in watching it anyway. One of the videos that Nova posted maybe three, three and a half years ago that I assume has been since taken down was him starting but not intending to finish, I think it was Pokemon Gold or Crystal version, and at some point he said, you know what, it's really boring, just let me speed it up super, super fast. I see, and since I forget who you uh, make the baby of as well. But he said, I think the other route up here just goes all the way back around to the opening of the cave, the entrance that we don't want to go to, and this leads to my end, but that isn't what Nova said. He said, you know what, this is boring, let me just speed it up. And that was my introduction to emulators and speed up, and I thought it was the funniest freaking thing I'd ever seen. 
And hopefully this part of the maze, I actually have to pay attention because it is going to be really complicated. Where do I want to go first? Do I want to go up? Up is the direct... Up from here is where I ultimately want to go. So I think I'll explore down first. And there are three paths for me to take down, so I guess I'll take the left path first. But it was that single short video that I don't think he even bothered to take seriously, where he just sped it off. I thought that was the hilarious thing... Ho There's your word of the day, hilarious. The funniest thing I've ever seen. And that was what reminded me, you know what, Pokemon is a thing that exists, and I liked it as a kid, so why not give it a shot? And here I am, two, three years later, having played through all of the games again, at least twice, except for the third generation, which I only played through once for some reason. Loving the franchise again, enough to spend longer than 12 months on an LP of Soul Silver. So, in that respect, thanks, Nova. That was a rant. What the hell am I going to talk about for the next 15 minutes? It's certainly going to take that long to get down to Mewtwo. Should I say up to Mewtwo? We have to walk all the way back. I really should have bought more repels. Why am I bringing more repels? I'm certainly... I just burped and hiccuped at the same time. That was really annoying. Is there a certain name for hiccuping and belching at the same time? Is it, I get the feeling I've called it something left and right. I don't think there's anything to the left. If there was a hidden item, it would appear on the machine. I really should have bought more repels. It would be kind of funny if for one of these rock smash rocks, I came across a super repel and it's like, hey, here's another super repel. Max Ether, too. Holy crap. I think we got a max elixir from one of these rock smash rocks, too. Those are pretty rare. Is there anything up here, down here, left here, right here of note? The Odd Incense. Another one of the incenses that we used to breed something who I do not remember because I'm not familiar with the fourth generation. You've heard me say that so many times that you probably don't need me to do I did not put up a repel. Stop hitting the B button. I imagine anybody who is still watching the Speed Up Chipmunk portion is only watching it because they think I sound funny chipmunk. So to those of you who enjoy me sounding funny chipmunk, um, hi. That's kind of weird. Um, I'm afraid to say anything because it's, um, I guess we go up now. There are only two areas of this maze we haven't explored. The top left up here, which I thought was going to lead to a hidden item, but it wound up not leading to a hidden item. And the other one should lead us all the way around to the next floor, which I do not remember is above or below us, but I think it's a straight shot from here. And by straight, I mean the absolute most crooked path imaginable. But seriously, how much effort do they have to put into a maze to make it this hard? And you know, when I was very little, I loved drawing mazes. I think I drew, I don't know, maybe like a couple of dozen mazes. And all the sections were different colors, and I specifically colored them with specific designs of mazes, like specific traps, a bunch of dead ends, or some of them would just be really, really long but have no dead ends at all. I have this whole system for mazes that I just completely forgot since I've grown up. But I loved mazes so much when I was a kid. I loved drawing them, I loved doing the mazes. I had whole books full of mazes that I would do when I was a kid. I don't know why I love mazes so much. We need rock climb, don't we? I sincerely hope Smash Ball can learn rock climb. Of course he can learn rock climb. He's a freaking rock. If he can't learn rock climb, what is he? You know, Mugsport, on ground types, I never understood, because ground types are immune to electric anyway. And now we have two things that know Rockwine, ultimately we're going to have to teach it to crunch, because we're going to want to use him in the final fight, and we need Rockwine in order to get there. But I believe in this area you only need Rockwine to access secrets and items and stuff, so it isn't entirely necessary that you have it. But it's certainly going to make getting around here a little bit easier. You know, puzzles, mazes, and word searches. I don't know why I loved word searches so much when I was a kid, but I know I did, I think this is going to lead to an item as well. And I love word searches to the point where whenever they had a word search where a word spelled backwards, I mean, where a word could be spelled backwards, that annoyed me. Just so I forget what this thing involves also. But, I mean, when you're so used to word searches where you can only find words that are spelled properly left to right, it really throws you off when you can... Does anybody care? Why do we even talk about this crap? We have nothing else to talk about. I mean, what would you talk about? You're just walking around in maze for 15 minutes chipmunk while nobody's listening to anything you have to say. Max revive, that's nice. What else did I enjoy so much as a kid that I just haven't done too much of now? I've already ranted a couple of times on TV and why I watch virtually none of it anymore. Really should get back, but there's so many good TV shows out there now, or even so many good reruns you can watch too. Although, I mean, when Seinfeld was on, I'd never watch that, and watching that again, I'm not sure why. I've got two of these down here. I mean, if you haven't watched Seinfeld, you have no sense of humor. And that show was terrific. I wish I had seen it sooner. But, yeah, I just do not watch television anymore. I just don't have the time for it. I barely have the time to watch the crap I do want to watch. I don't have time to watch crap that I don't want to watch. Let alone be able to actually sit down and watch it, although I, I think we have a DVR now, so we could potentially just record whatever we want to watch and watch it later. And I suppose for anybody who has the same trouble I do, where you're just not available at specific times during the day, so if you can't watch something that specific time, there's no chance you're watching without a DVR. So I suppose it would be useful in that regard. But I still want to fall into that category. There's so many good shows I like to watch when they're on, too. I think when I was in middle school or high school, I really had a thing for Law & Order. Not sure why, but, I mean, that show was pretty good, and I think they're still on, too. It's just... So I, I imagine if I went back to watch it again, I wouldn't recognize any of the characters on it. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But I had the intros for Law & Order. All three types of Law & Order that were on at the time I had memorized it. Sort of. And I wonder if I... I could reach back in the depths of my mind if I would be able to recite it. I don't think I would. I mean, if you gave me a couple of minutes to think about it, I probably could, but as I am now, I don't think I would be able to. And if memory serves, this is the set of rock line walls that I specifically wanted to come across, and I went through it backwards. I wanted to go the other way. There should be another set of rock line walls just to our north that I didn't see because we don't have flash. Yeah, there it is. And if memory serves, this is the one that takes us over to the Electorizer that I thought we might have had when we faced Surge in his rematch. But it turns out it's down here, just like Thunderbolt was. And this is, of course, the item that you would use to evolve Electabuzz into Electivire. But now... 
besides one stray item all the way down to our south, it's a straight shot from here to Mewtwo. Now, I've had to repel up this whole time. Most of the stuff down here isn't that interesting. One that is, although we've had access to it before. The Black Sludge! Not the Black Sludge. It's like leftovers, but for poison types, and it harms any other type that's holding it. You can also find Ditto down here, who, in the original games, would be more and more likely to find as you got closer to Mewtwo. And given their weights, their colors, their size, a lot of people have speculated that Ditto were failed attempts at cloning Mew. I just thought it was an interesting bit of information to come across, because there wouldn't really be any more relevant time for me to say it. But... There he is. The successful, or I suppose successful is a weird choice of words. Mewtwo. When Team Rocket tried to clone Mew, you be the judge as to whether or not they succeeded. Of all things, making funny faces at it. Eight minutes! Mewtwo! Oh boy, the Pokedex entry for this thing. It usually remains motionless to conserve energy so that it may unleash its full power in battle. And anybody who was around in the first generation knows just how brutal he can be. Particularly those who remember where that music came from. I hope that brought back lots and lots of nightmares. But up here is the ladder that I avoided when we initially came into Cerulean Cave. Because it goes all the way back to the entrance where we came in. And this is how we leave. Well, now that we have Mewtwo at our disposal, arguably at least until a certain point, the most powerful Pokémon out there. I'd say we could call that an episode. This is Universal Giant, and I'm probably going to drag this out for another 30 seconds so we can- Hi Gavin, how you doing? Sure! Boy, was Gavin on the route up to the 
Victory Road? I don't even remember where he was. It said Route 26, so that's... Wait, 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 wait. Route 26 is all the way over here, isn't it? Is this Route 26? Or is this Route 25? Because I'm thinking if it's Route 26 and he's over here, why don't we battle right now? Is he over here? Gavin, you over here? Gavin? Maybe this is just Route 25. That's unfortunate. Route 26 is all the way over just to the west and just to the... I've gotten west and east so confused. How many times do I have to tell you how little I understand the difference between east and west? I guess Route 26 is somewhere around here that I'm too lazy to find. So let's just check out Mewtwo, and I believe Lupus being Dark-type would have walled his only attacking move, which was Psycho Cut. Kind of weird for him to have Psycho Cut, considering how powerful Mewtwo is on the special side, to give him a physical Psychic type, but what are you going to do? He also used Guard Swap and Power Swap a lot. What these two moves do is swap your attack and defense buffs, respectively. So, for instance, when he set up to plus six special defense with Amnesia and used Guard Swap, he gave us plus six and started setting up himself again, which is kind of weird. But look how massive his special attack is! And in the first generation, when special attack and special attack were one stat, you can imagine just how broken he was. But I digress. Now that we finally have him captured, I think there's only one other extra I want to show off before we finally head back to Indigo Plateau and face off against the Elite Four one more time. Till then, this is Universal Giant, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.